Hi everyone, this is week 34 for Matthew's Movie Mentions. Uh, this is everything that I've watched up to August 27th. So um, I've been looking at the data for what I've watched so far, and I am comfortably e heading towards the 365 that I wanted to watch. I'm actually heading more even than that. I'm trending towards about 410 at the moment. Um, I'm wondering if that means I could watch 365 new films this year, so films I had never seen before, as well as all the other films that I've watched that I have seen before. At the moment, I'm not quite trending there. It, it will hit somewhere around 350, 355 maybe. So I might keep with the sort of accelerated watch rate I'm doing at the moment and, and maybe shift a little bit to watch 365 new films. Um, we'll see. I made the mistake of saying this out loud at the beginning of the year and then thought perhaps I shouldn't have, so perhaps I shouldn't have said this out loud now. We shall see. We'll see how we do. So this week, the movies that I'm going to be discussing are About Time, Mystery Men, To All the Boys I've Loved Before, The Jurassic Games, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, Deliverance, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey, and The Seventh Seal. So About Time, there was an article recently uh, about the best time travel movies, and this was on that list. Uh, it's an interesting idea. that I, I quite like the idea of it when I saw it being advertised, but I wasn't totally sure of it, particularly knowing it was pitched more as a rom-com than a sort of interesting sci-fi time travel thing. It I think I was right about that. It, it presents some interesting concepts, but it kind of disregards them when it doesn't need them or when they're getting in its own way. The core emotional elements are quite well done, but there's I think there's an interesting story in here about Rachel McAdams meeting this guy repeatedly uh, and not being aware of it and him sort of using the knowledge he gains from her to stalk his way into her life, perhaps. Uh, Mystery Men, we covered this on Pop Culturally, Depri Pop Culturally Deprived recently. Um, I'm delighted that there was someone else who recommended this film to Mandy, frankly. I was led to believe that I was the only one who liked this film. I think it holds up even better now than when it was released in, in this age of modern superhero films. It's an interesting take on superheroes and superhero powers and their tropes. The ridiculousness of the film works... I think better now because the most of the films that we're seeing are more realistic superhero films, whereas when this came out, uh, things like Batman and Robin were the, you know, the, the superhero film du jour, and even X-Men and Spider-Man, which came just after, are a little bit more comic-y compared to what we get now. To all the boys I've loved before, um, everyone's been talking about this, so I definitely wanted to watch this. We watched it over two nights, and after the first night, the first half of it, I was really intrigued. I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I felt like there was going to be some twist or revelation as it went on. The second half it was a little more ordinary. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, but it became a pretty standard sort of kind of teen coming of age rom-com type thing. Uh, the characterizations and performances are superb. It is a really good fun um, I just, I, I felt like we, they set us up for something a bit different than we got in the end. The Jurassic Games looks like and seems like it's a, an absolutely trashy B-movie, but it's a little bit more than that, I think. It's effectively The Running Man, but instead of being people in a sort of gladiatorial situation, um, it's a it's dinosaurs in a virtual reality situation. There's a bit more plot going on to it than this time, I think, than we get with Running Man. Um, and the production, the show element of it was made much more villainous. The, the presenter, it was quite funny, the presenter was very much like a kind of Chris Pratt light, so this being dinosaurs it just made it even better. Uh, it, yeah, it was pretty good. For, for what seemed like it was going to be a fairly cheap, schlocky movie, I quite enjoyed it. Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Um, if I'm very honest and admit something, I've never seen the original Jumanji. It didn't matter here. This is a fairly ordinary action film. It's got a couple of interesting ideas about video games and avatars. They wanted to do a whole thing with Karen Gillan in a Titan revealing outfit so they could make comments about women in games and, and the way they're shown. But they also used it as an opportunity to present her in the male gaze. So it, it, even if you're doing the thing, ironically, you're still doing the thing. Um, Deliverance. There are a couple of moments in Deliverance that are very well known, but the rest of the film I wasn't too aware of. A, a bit like Bullet, I, I can see that that's because the, the famous moments are the more interesting bits of the film. Dueling banjos is, is wonderful, it's very well done. The kid on the banjo is very skilled at it, but he's really sinister. And then the attack 
on Ned Beatty and John Voight is horrifying. It's well done from every perspective of it. Outside of that, this is... It very clearly is an early example of what is now a pretty standard horror type of film, the kind of stalker in nature or something, but I think it has been improved upon since. The The film itself sort of was a bit lacklustre outside of the, the two famous sequences. Uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is one of my favourite films. It's one of the best sequels ever, I think. It absolutely improves on the original. Uh, the falling sequence in the middle is one of the best comedy moments of any film for me. We we did a great episode about this on Pop Culture Deprived, so do go and look that up. We, we explored it in quite good detail, I think, and a good discussion on it. And The Seventh Seal, knowing that, obviously, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey is based heavily on The Seventh Seal at times, I wanted to go and watch it in preparation for the podcast. It's an excellent film. It's got some really good ideas investigating existence and self-worth. Um, it drags a little bit at times, but I, it, it was all told very, very well. It, it did some really interesting things. So, recommendation for the week, oh, Mystery Men and Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. They're both excellent comedies. I, I can watch them at any time. Bogus Journey itself, like I say, expands on the original in every way that I like to see a sequel doing. And then it takes a different tack on the plot and the comedy. It's not just a repetition of the first or doubling down on it again. So, over the next week, um, to watch The Seventh Seal, I got a three weeks access to the BFI channel on Amazon. So, I'm going to be watching lots of classic films on BFI, I think. So, it'll be interesting to see what I can find and what I consider uh, my take on these classic, classic movies. So, I will speak to you week 35. <laughs>